once again we caution you. These stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. That puts the epicenter of the 7.1 earthquake right in the heart of the San Francisco Bay. This just into News Australia. We've also been getting strange reports of something moving under the Golden Gate Bridge. I mean, it must be 300 feet tall. Cars are tumbling off the bridge. San Francisco has now become a war zone. Let the Jets can bring down this massive creature. I don't know what is going to be left of this city. Cutting a three-mile-wide path of destruction for the city of San Francisco before a barrage of missiles brought the giant beast down. I can only pray that this is the end of it. Material Podcast. I'm Tom Carnell. I'm Brian Ellison. And I'm Langley West. And tonight we're here for episode 74, where we're talking about Daigaiju films. Now, Tom. Yes. What does that mean? Big monster movies. Big okay. creature. Think Godzilla. Think Toho. Think uh, Pacific Rim. Sure. That now, uh, the reason why I, I say that is because most people just say gaiju films. Yeah. And, and they think that that means giant Japanese monster, when actually kaiju, Brian, means... Strange beast. So that could be anything, right? Anything. Yeah. 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 The Wolfman could be a kaiju. Yeah. Or even Frankenstein. So... He even did a giant Frankenstein so thing. So, in theory, even the yokai could be a kaiju. Right. By that definition of the word. Right. Because we're talking about Daigaiju, we're talking about giant monsters. Okay. You know, giant monsters. There's the and, difference. And, 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 and although that, that, that encompasses um, a lot of other regional areas, um, we are going to be talking mostly about Japanese monster movies, but we are going to open it up to these other um, areas as well. But there's a point that I want to make about uh, Japan in particular when we get to it, when we get to it. Now, I know that usually the gaiju involves conventional animals and giant insects and mythological creatures, but although I have not seen these films, my understanding is there's also monster movies based upon, like, household objects and things. Is that correct? Yeah, like, there's... Like umbrellas and things like that. Yeah, Just there's... simple things. It's, yeah, it's really weird. I don't remember any titles, but there's there's one movie that's got, like, a... I don't know, a water faucet monster. <laughs> but is it a like, giant faucet? Yeah. What was the one with the big I mean, what is it? In its, in its okay, that was, a, that was a, a, uh, a, an opponent of Gamera. Gamera. Yes. I was just called a knife head. turtle. Look, I got a full disclosure on this one, guys. I, I am not a fan of Gaiju movies. <laughs> I, I, I like them in the way that what I call this nostalgic fans like them. Sure. They remind me of a kid. They remind me of me as a kid. They remind me of Saturday mornings watching or Saturday nights watching creature features. But I don't, I don't tend to watch them much anymore. Sure. Um, Cause I'm old. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, they're, they, they go through this weird arc, right? Yeah. Where they start out serious. They start out. They they start out. You know, in the in the in the fifties. Talking about the Japanese ones. Um, they start in the fifties as as their take on big monster movies. Their answer to Beast from Twenty Thousand Fathoms. All those big bug movies right. from and, the fifties. And and, and, it, and then it kind of devolves, as we've talked about, always happens, like with the Universal Monsters, and they all start to come together in these films. Um, where it's all a group of monsters together, and then it's <laughs> silly, right? Yeah, it becomes the WWE. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, but I see, I'm seeing a return to that the seriousness, even the ones from Toho and, and yeah, the, the reboot on 
there's a Godzilla come out. There's a Godzilla King Kong movie coming out by here. Right, which is dumb. Which is dumb. Um, but the, but the, the funny... Toho movies, the, the Toho movies go to about, what, 2004 or so? With the Godzilla Final Wars. Wasn't that the last one that Toho no, did? No, well, they've got a new one coming out. Yeah. Godzilla Resurgence. Yeah, and there was a point where the... But God- I mean, was, that, was there anything between 2004 and nine? Uh, or nine uh, today, or 2009, I, I, I have a list, but I don't have any I don't know. Dates. Because I'm old, 2004 still seems like yesterday. <laughs> <and> it, uh, <laughs> so I, because I know there's been stuff like the people have been doing various movies here and there, and I, I, I don't know when, because there's other studios, right? There's other right. studios that have yeah. done giant monster movies, not yeah. just Toho. Sh- sh- uh, Toho, Shojiku, Dai. Um, Dai. <laughs> yeah, um, so that's why I was wondering, so, like, at... at Things just pooped out for Toho in 2004, and other people picked up the ball. Right. Well, or now you're saying there's a new Toho movie coming. Yeah, th- yeah. there is one. There's a new Toho. They, okay. they own ultimately the rights, but I think that they would sell them off, or, or they these little studios would make their own. All the well, sure. films. They have like to sell the rights in order for you know Legendary yeah. to make you know the Godzilla movie from right, a few years right, ago. Right. Well, I know like Shojiku did like it came from outer space and 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 stuff that was straight out Gaiju movies, but they were just dabbling. Right. You know. Um. I, I was mentioning before we got on air that this is going to be one of those shows. There are, this is one of those subjects that um, there are rabid, rabid fans who are going to just hate us for this episode because yeah. we're going to mispronounce things. We're going to get uh, what these movies are about wrong, or so, you know, I. There's I, such a flood of them, though. You know, it's it, well. Also, know, too, these fans are probably unlike Tom, still young at heart. So they can maybe. enjoy these movies. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, you know, and if you if we do screw any of that up, just think Baka Gajin and we'll be we'll be we'll be covered on that. Mm. Um one of the things <laughs> I want to mention out of the box is uh, a guy uh friend of the show, August, August Ragoni. Um look him up online. He is like the one of the greatest living resources on this stuff. Yeah. He has several books out. Um he's he used to Brian he used to work at Tower at, around the same time that we did. Oh wow! Believe it or not. Wow, did he? Yeah. I, yeah. I, what was his name again? August Ragoni, bearded guy. No. Yeah. Yeah, kind of a. And guy. he's like he's hanging out with the guy who who is you know created Godzilla and he's writing books on it. And stuff. You know I, I, him and also a guy a guy named Jeff Zornow who is the Godzilla um, comic artist. Hmm. He's doing some really good stuff. Just yeah. want to mention those because they're 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 pals. And also, uh, uh, there's a, uh, another podcast that we we are friends with, uh, the Monster Party. Yeah. Um, and those cats go to Japan uh, occasionally. And, yeah, they went bananas on the on the Godzilla. Godzilla yeah, yeah. 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 Um, one thing I wanted to bring up before we get too far off is is the the interesting idea that most of these giant monsters all came about via the same source, and that's the bomb. Right. It all begins with the bomb, with this stuff. Um, and, 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 and by extension of that, it all begins with Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Godzilla, um, um, the director, um, Ishiro Honda, was really, uh, really impressed with the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, the Ray Harryhausen film with the big, you know, the giant Redosaurus, the giant lizard that's been brought back. Um, and he wanted to do something like that. And so they, so they made Godzilla. And because it's Japan and their history, um, you know, it's, 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 it's spawned from this, the nuclear incident, you know, mm-hmm. the bombing of... In much the same way as the big bug movies of the 50s spawned from the fear of, of the bomb. Exactly. This was people processing having been victims of the bomb. Right. And, and it just comes out. There's a psychological term that means bomb affected and... I can't. I don't can't grab it in my head right now, but it's very much the entire culture being that way. Look right. at look at, and it expresses itself in in their art. Like look at Akira. Look at sure. a lot of the. There's things. so many. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, in in um, I think it was March first, 1954. Um, there was a Japanese fishing boat um, that was caught in the area where they, at the Bikini Atoll where they were doing testing in the Marshall Islands, mm-hmm. uh, nuclear testing, and, and it made a lot of news. Um, mere months later, that incident had been put into the beginning of the 1954 Gojira. Wow. Um, 
So, you know, it's it's all there. Um, Which means, Gojira means? Godzilla. Godzilla. out there. Yeah. Uh, well, well it's a uh, whale and gorilla. Really? Really? Yeah. I think that's a very appropriate... <laughs> well, you know, since yeah, we're it's talking... a combination of two terms, whale and gorilla. Um, since we're talking about Godzilla, I just was looking out on YouTube an interview with Raymond Burr, who... Who he was asked about his role in the original Godzilla. Sure. And he said, "Oh yeah, everything." Every he was defending thing, him as Perry Mason, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, uh, "Ironside." The uh, everything that they filmed, they filmed over in like Culver City and in a little you know warehouse. Well, and, yeah, I. I, I it'd be they felt they needed did, someone white. You mean the stuff that he did specifically yeah. that he did? Right. He did. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think I'm, he even was over there. Yeah, he wasn't. I'm sure in the Japanese version, he's not even in there. No, he's not. No, he's not. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, they added him. They're, and they added him. You had to get an American audience. They, they did that a like lot. Him. There was an actor, Nick Adams. Yeah, who was in yeah. a lot of these movies. Um, in, in the version there that was we a saw, where he was doing like he was the guy in the fifties doing stuff, and then he went over there. Wasn't he in that Johnny Rebel thing that we talked about on the Hateful Eight? He was. Yeah, that was. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And then there, I, I think there was Rex Reason, or there was like two brothers that that had different names that kind of looked alike, and I forget which one. I think it was one of them was in some of these movies as well. Kind of huh. like your B actors from the fifties, right? right? Yeah, no, like, nobody like, really big name, but yeah, well, like the guy Tony Franciosa in Guanji, right? Went over. It was an Italian film. Yeah. He went over and he right. Did that. Um, but there's a slew of these Godzilla movies, man. Yeah. So many that I I don't know how people keep them straight. Yeah, dozens and dozens, and he fights. Well, it's, it's there's I think officially 28. Is it really? So it's yeah, officially 28 is my is by my count, and oh. you keep them straight by Godzilla versus whoever, right? Oh, yeah. Godzilla versus Gigan, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's it's not too hard to... And the later ones, you get more monsters and stuff going on. Like Godzilla right. Final Wars, he pretty much takes on everybody yeah. he's had fought in the past. Right on. It's he, a battle royale. He takes on... It is, yes. It, it is. It, yeah. It's kind of funny, too, because in some instances, he'll have these long fights, and then someone, uh, some monster will show up, and then bam, one punch, and the monster's out. That yeah. way they can fit them all in in one movie, right? Sure, sure, sure. That same thing happens in WrestleMania. <laughs> Absolutely. Is, that's my wow. WWE reference. Exactly. Right. So the first Godzilla movie, um, Godzilla is definitely a malevolent force. He's 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 a bad guy. He's a big monster, and he's just fucking shit up. Yeah. Right? And he and they kill him at the end. I think it's interesting that he can be seen, at least from my viewpoint, in two different ways. Um, he's a force of nature, pointing out the folly of mankind, mm-hmm. as Blue Oyster Cult pointed out mm-hmm. in their song. Yeah, that's um, song. Yeah, great song, yeah. Or um, he's a representation of Japanese militant fascism that arose during World War II that had to be stopped with the final solution of the bomb. <laughs> wow. That, that, that's how I yeah. see Godzilla. Wow. I, I, I'm going to need a moment to, to snuggle up with that and, <laughs> and think about that for a minute. Sure. Well, I mean, there's... there's there's something to be said for the idea that the, the, the destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and Godzilla is, is, a, is a film that is talking about the horrors of bombs being dropped on cities, right? Right, right. You mean you can you can certainly make make that case? Yeah, I mean um, Godzilla is basically a big ass nuclear bomb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Only this time it's coming from nature or God or the Earth or whatever you want to, you know. And of course, in the early days, he's he's a villain. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't later that they gave him like a kid. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Oh yeah, Minola, Minola. Yeah, uh-huh. one of my favorite. Uh, oh, it's everyone Minola. loves that guy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not me. I know. Uh, he's you, you cute for a, for a point, but um, yeah. I, yeah, it's, some, hard, it's, it's hard like to he's think. one film, and I'm done with him. Right. Yeah, I'm done with. Him. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's um, there's a lot of that sort of. Umbrella. I mean, we, we, we with with the term gaiju, there's all the there's the Godzilla films, there's the Gamera films, there's half a yeah. dozen solo films. Sure. Gamera, uh, maybe Langley can answer this. Gamera is pretty popular. I mean, maybe the second most popular monster outside of Godzilla. Yeah, he was he was done by um, 
a rival film company called uh, Daiei. I, I think I'm pronouncing mm-hmm. that right. D-A-I-E-I. Uh, not Toho. And it was yeah, kind of... He has a lot of movies. Yeah, he was yeah, kind of their time. answer to Godzilla. Um, and he... It's less clear as to what he represents. I mean, Godzilla very clearly is talking about the bomb. And, and he rese- represents $100 million at the box office. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Gamera um, uh, winds up becoming... So Godzilla winds up kind of becoming neutral. Mm-hmm. Like, he, 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 he fights the bad monsters, but he fights them because yeah. they're monsters on his turf. Yeah. Whereas Gamera kind of from... He's like a protector of mankind. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting Have you of... seen that uh, Gamera trilogy in the late, the late 90s, Langley? No, the newer ones. I have not. Yeah, um, so I hear those are pretty good. They get pretty good reviews. Yeah. The, uh, interesting that Gamera, they did, supposedly did all of them on MST3K. Oh, as opposed to everything else, they just had a thing for Gamera. Yeah, and they. Just well, Gamera. I mean, and, and when you first hear it, it's a ridiculous concept. It's this giant turtle. Great theme song. Yeah. <laughs> um, and has kind of a psychic connection with this boy, at least in one of the movies. Um, I wanted to point out, that, carrying on that that point about Godzilla as a metaphor for um, a force of nature or a Japanese fascism. Um, Eventually, I think becomes a um, almost a way to save face. It becomes a symbol for Japan, and um, uh, as we know, does, does, that, does that tie into the destruction of those you know the, the cities with the atomic bomb? I mean, because usually that's what's the point is being made that it has to do with what happened to them at the end of the uh, World War Two. Well, I, and you're I, kind of saying that. Is that Godzilla's payback for them? Yeah, I think eventually, I think eventually, that's what he becomes. He, it's, it becomes um, uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a fuck you um, to these guys that unleashed this horrible mm. uh, fate on them. Even though he's not going over and destroying. Yeah, America. I was just going to say it'd be, it'd be so much. So you're better. saying that they're blaming like the military of Japan in the 30s and 40s as opposed to blaming Americans for dropping the bomb on them. I do I, I pay back for their for their fascist as I you say do, society. Yes, that's exactly that's exactly okay. what I see. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that is an interesting <laughs> point to wrap your head that. <laughs> I like I I keep thinking the big rubber monster kicking over the Plato or the the place called Building that well, <laughs> this is what we got at. So here's here's the cool thing about what I love about the effects in the, in the in in these movies. Um, yes, it always looks like a guy in a suit. It always looks like a model. But if you, that's largely due to the way that they're filmed. Mm-hmm. Um, those models are impeccable. I mean, if you see them, you know, oh, they look great. Up, they look like building. They're just not filmed the same way that somebody like, a, you know, a great cinematographer would film them to make them look real. You could take those same models and give them to a different, you know, um, uh, director, and they would look 100% real. But they shot them under bright studio lights always, mm-hmm. and, you know. Uh, but I think that that ends up becoming part of the charm. Yeah, I think that, I mean, the one thing about the, the first Godzilla movie, even though it's dated... There is. It's a serious film, right? And it, oh, sure. The, the comedy of them, you know, starts a guy in a suit smashing buildings, but it's not as uh, is not as comedic as the later films are, especially well, when Godzilla becomes a hero. Right? Isn't that the way it always is, where it's played completely serious in the beginning, and as we go further along in the franchise, it starts getting played more and more silly, and sure. next thing you know, it's you know, it's Godzilla and. Uh, you know, Martin and Lewis. I think that these films uh, show something that ja- that Japan is exceptionally good at. They, it's it's appropriate. It's appropriating another culture, mm-hmm. um, and then twisting it and making it completely their own. Yeah. Um, which they're geniuses at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Time and time again, in all different kinds of, of cultures, and and we do the same to them. I don't think we do it as successfully though. 
Um, when, when we make westerns based off of Japanese samurai movies, for mm-hmm. example. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to bring up the Daimajin series. Sure. Because it's one of those ones that people, when I mentioned it as, as part of this conversation, people real, a couple of people were like, what? What? Um, if you haven't seen the Daimajin series, it's a giant stone golem slash samurai yeah. that gets brought back to life and does this essentially what Godzilla does, and that's trash the place. There's three movies. They're great if you want to see them. Those are actually movies I can get behind yeah. for some reason. I buy into Daimajin, but I don't buy into the other. Those would be like, uh, what's the is the term uh, instead of kaiju, kaijin? Is that the term for like humanoid yeah. type monsters? Humanoid type monsters, yeah. Humanoid, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, sir. Right on. Um, Does anybody have a favorite Japanese kaiju? For me, it's King Ghidorah. Yeah. The three- Outside of Godzilla. It's like a hydra, right? Yeah, it's this three-headed dragon with two tails, and and he, he breathes lightning. Um, he first pops up in Godzilla versus Ghidra. Um, exactly. And, and but he, he he continues. Basically, he's a weapon used by in the Japanese version Venusians, mm-hmm. um, in the American version it's Martians um, to attack the Earth. He's a weapon, um, and he he travels interstellar space in the form of a comet and then he crashes and he he comes out and fuck shit up he totally fucks shit we up. always end up at fucking shit up yeah absolutely there's a lot of shit fucked up in these films what about you brian that brian, brian, brian well, yeah that, that that was me yeah gitara gitara is my probably my favorite king gitara and he was in uh, uh his first appearance is gitara the three-headed monster he would later come back though in some of the um, films towards the end of the Godzilla movies where he's called Monster X in, yeah. in like, Kaiser Ghidorah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he's in so, Destroy All Monsters and yeah. all that stuff. He's, he's Yeah, those those are the earlier ones with him. He's one of the monsters that is consistently always a bad guy. Well, uh, there's some movies where he actually was kind of the hero, I guess. Really? Um, but, yeah, the there's some offshoots with him. But, yeah, for the most part, he's... He's the villain. So, and I, and I think if you probably ranked all the Godzilla villains, I would be surprised if he's not number one or number two. Yeah, my favorites. Um, they're, they're by just by the nature of it, there's two of them: Sanda and Gyra, um, from the movie War of the Gargantuas. Mm-hmm. Um, this that's probably my favorite kaiju movie of all time. Um, there was a movie that came out before this called. Uh, Frankenstein conquers the world, mm-hmm. and there's this giant Japanese Frankenstein monster, <laughs> which is rather humorous looking. At it is kind of. And they funny look looking. ridiculous every time they do yeah. Frankenstein. It looks yeah. ridiculous. So this is yeah. a sequel to that film, in, wherein um, tissue from him, because he's destroyed at the end of the first movie, is used to create these two. I don't know uh, how to describe them. Kind of big, giant troll looking guys. Um, there's a green one and a brown one, and the green one is bad and the brown one is good, and they fight. Um, I really dig those. They're like they're kind of like, you kind of like take the jolly green giant and make him fuzzy, or or, or have stuff hanging off of him, and then have them do martial arts against each other. Um, I love that movie, man. Yeah, absolutely. It has Russ Hamlin in it in doing one of those. We got to do this for the American roles. Uh, the aforementioned Die Machine. Other than that, yeah. Like I say, I you know, the, you know, I'll throw in Pacific. Uh, no, we'll get we'll get to Pacific Rim. Uh, maybe Q. Yeah, the Q, giant Q, the vultury, wing serpent. winged serpent thing. Who but, was, who who made that? Um, uh, same guy who made this stuff, Larry Cohen. Yeah. 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 With Michael Moriarty and. David Carradine <laughs> getting eaten by a um, stop motion winged serpent. Uh, yeah, you know, I think that some of the early and and I I get the feeling that I read way way more into these films than maybe some folks do. But I absolutely I, well, I I think that I think that they re, you know different ones represent different elements of Japanese culture. 
Um, for example, Rodan. Rodan was this giant pterodactyl-like thing uh, that um, would destroy cities with his sonic boom. You know, he would fly so fast he would just flatten cities. Um, and there's an interesting if you if you are a fan of Pacific Rim, you should check out Rodan because there's this whole subplot about these giant larvae that um, uh, they're, they're giant uh, larvae to prehistoric dragonflies. Anyway, you get the the the, the sub creatures, the things that aren't really what the movie's about, and that's interesting. That's cool. But I see Rodan as talking um, about um, the Japanese acceptance of suicide as a uh, societal... I don't know where you're getting this. Okay, so check it out. So check it out. So check it out. I really have so no it out. idea. In that movie... So check it out. It's like, the words make sense, but I don't get In it. In that movie, there are two Rodans, okay? There are two of these winged creatures, okay? One of them gets beaten down enough by the military that it ends up falling into this river of lava, okay, and it's dying. The 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 remaining creature um, makes a choice to dive into the lava rather than live alone or, or be defeated by these lesser, quote-unquote, lesser beings. It chooses to save face by killing itself. Okay, but that's inherent. That, that's a that's a a trope that's inherently Japanese. Ex- that's the point I'm making. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So <laughs> Rodan and Seppukuro is what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, right. Was there more than one Rodan movie? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's. Oh yeah. Rodan pops he up. Here's a number these, of things. Yeah. All these verses. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's a featured player. It's mm. part of the stable. Um, can we talk about their, the the cult, the genre's uh, mishandling of King Kong? Yeah, it always looks like a guy in a rug. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so anybody? Well, but, you yeah, mishandling. I, I mean, what, what's cool? First, let's start with that. What? Yes, I would agree with you. But what what was mishandled in your in your mind? Because there's there's King Kong versus Godzilla. And I believe the other King Kong movie was King Kong Escapes, which doesn't feature Godzilla. Right. And I also understand, too, with King Kong versus Godzilla, that if you're an American audience, King Kong seems to win. But if you're a Japanese audience, the movie was Didn't edited differently. The so he, he wins in, Godzilla wins in Japan. That's, that's correct. That is correct. So where King Kong versus Godzilla comes from, believe it or not, is from a script by Willis O'Brien... Um, called King Kong vs. Frankenstein. And in this script, uh, he had Frankenstein building this giant um, humanoid thing, and he winds up, somehow winds up on Skull, I don't know if he winds up on Skull Island or Kong gets transported, but anyway, somebody's displaying them both, and they get loose, and they fight each other. Um, he wound up selling that script to, I can't remember the guy's names, uh, but they then went and sold it to Toho, who then changed it to King Kong versus Godzilla. Darlene O'Brien always maintained that he died as a broken heart from that, uh, died from a broken heart as a result of that deal. Um, my problem with King Kong versus Godzilla in any form, whether it's Japanese or the, the upcoming American, rumored American film, is that Godzilla is like 500 feet tall. Okay, Godzilla yeah. is like, I mean, like King Kong feet tall. Yeah. 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 Did I say that backwards? The reverse. Yeah. Godzilla towers over over mountains. Right. And uh, King Kong. King Kong's yeah, he's a big monkey. Yeah. He's, he's a little bigger than your house. Yeah. So I always hated. It's just a reimagined King Kong, fellas. Sure. All it is. Sure. But they, they get squirrely with the um, with the size within the scope of the of these pictures. Where right. at one point you see him and he's he's big, but mm-hmm. he's not giant. And the next thing you know, he's the exact same size as Godzilla, right. and they're fighting. And yeah. I gotta say, you know, as a kid, these movies were 
hugely important to me. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why, but they were. And uh, for whereas whereas King Kong has kind of become one of my favorite movies for a long time, he was kind of in the back seat as a kid because there was just something inherently cool about Godzilla and this giant reptile, and he could breathe fire and just, yeah. like, all this stuff. Is that the same for you, Brian? Well, growing up, um, and I'm, I'm still a fan of these movies, uh, so I don't know if it's, that's why I was joking earlier about youthful enthusiasm, but I mean, there's things that colored my thinking when it came to sci-fi and horror movies. I loved the Universal Monster movies. I loved anything that Ray Harryhausen did. I loved the Hammer movies, the Hammer Studio movies, and I, and I loved the Godzilla stuff, right? And, mm. I, and I still do. I still, I still find it fun. And for me... Sure, and you look back at this stuff and you go, oh, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of cheesy and what have you. But there's a sense of uh, fun about these movies, which I like. And in some ways, our society's got to the point where everything has to be so serious and you have to really show the realism of things. Um, sometimes it's fun just to step back and have, have a good time. I mean, there are, you, you can say that there are there are movies that aren't good, right, that are like by – critical standards they'll say those aren't good movies but you could say there was a good movie experience right you had a good sure. time and and to me when critics kind of attack godzilla movies or when people are like ah it's 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 not very good it's look at the guy in the big suit but my my question would be but many people have a good time at these you have a good time right yeah absolutely right for me it was always something that was just ubiquitous it was always on you can always count that someone on the weekend would be would be playing one on TV. Right. So, in the days of like four channels, hey, a Godzilla movies on. Okay, sure. Uh-huh. Um, but I was always I was never a giant fan. Right. So. Yeah. A giant fan of. Yeah. Giants. Of giant things. Yeah. Yeah. No. No pun intended. Apparently. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, again, you, they're fun and they're kind of innocuous and they're great. Cre- for me, they were great creature feature movies. You know, sure, they used to play them on creature feature all the time, right? And um, sure. yeah. and uh, uh, you know, enjoyable. But these days, I feel like the people who I meet, they they're fans because sooner or later you get to the well. I grew up with them, right? Um, they well, go ahead, Brian. Go ahead, Lang. Oh, thanks. Uh, no, I was going to say that that's something that people have thrown. Lots of times when I'm talking about films that I enjoyed as a kid or whatever, or TV shows that I enjoyed as a kid, that people always will say that. Like, well, you know, you, you look through it through, the, through your young eyes. But I've always countered that and said, like, well, no, there's a number of things that I enjoyed as a kid that I don't enjoy as an adult. Mm-hmm. Uh, that just it, it doesn't it doesn't stay with you over the years. Sure. And I think I think Godzilla films do. I, I, that's why I said sometimes it's it's just a question of. Yeah, they're just fun. You you can recount the fun you had as a kid, and you still have it as an adult. And even though as a kid, I could say that sure, I saw the cheesiness in these movies, mm-hmm. but I still enjoyed them, right? Absolutely. And 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 I think that's kind of where I'm at. It's like, yeah, I don't think it's a, it's a kid thing. I mean, I'm, I'll still watch them. But, you know, I, I there's still a number of Godzilla movies that I haven't seen. I'm right? I'm so, interested in finding out if there there are a lot of new Godzilla fans. And what part, where do they land in the genre? You know what I mean? Like a young well, kid, does a young kid look at the first couple of Godzillas and go, this is cool? Well, I think it's like Doctor Who, right? You, you, you'll you find a lot of Doctor Who fans, but yeah. we're talking the series that goes back to 2005, right? You're talking <laughs> about the new Doctors. And so do they like the old stuff? Uh, chances are, in many cases, they don't watch the old stuff. Or if they right. do, they don't really like it. They're aware but, of past doctors, but yeah. Correct, correct. And so to me, in a sense, Godzilla is like that. You have you have different Godzillas. You have the early Godzillas. You have later Godzillas. You have um, kind of the new Godzilla that we're seeing with uh, the, the 2014 Godzilla and the, or the type of Pacific Rim uh, monsters. So, so to me, we're all part of that same process. We're all part of that group. Different people might like different things, but I think Godzilla will always be popular. Doctor Who will always be popular. The Beatles will always be popular. Elvis will always be popular. James Bond. Because, because people will discover these, and they'll say, like, hey, I like early Elvis. Hey, I like Vegas Elvis, right? right? 
Right. You all can fit in the same group, but you might like different things. But there's a popularity there that I think crosses boundaries and, and crosses age and, and what have you. So that, that's why you have Godzilla – you know, many, many decades later, still, still going strong. Still, yeah, still. Did, did, still we, bo- did we all see, I, I haven't, but did we all see the new one? Yes. Yeah, and, yeah. And what? Um, it's, a, it's a good movie. Um, for, for the fans like what we've been talking about, uh-huh. they may not like it because there's not a lot of Godzilla in it. Right. You know, I think he's, he gets like 15 minutes of screen time. It's all on together. YouTube. Um, I did, I liked the design because mm-hmm. they stayed true to the, the original Godzilla design, which I think is a great design. I mean, it's changed. There's, you know, through the years, you can see different changes, mm-hmm. different, but, it, but basically it stays the this same. This one seemed burlier. Yeah. And more, more like prison gym yeah. big. Yeah. <laughs> Godzilla's been well, working the, out. In the Toho movies, the Godzilla in those, those later Toho movies, he's more feral looking, almost wolf. Yeah. Yeah. What about right? the, the early The early monsters, the early Godzilla movies, it looks like somebody hit him in the head with the, or the face. Yeah. Right? Like he looked a little like Down Syndrome. Yeah, well, that was that, well, that, was that, that gorilla aspect of, yeah. of the yeah. whale yeah. gorilla mixture. This yeah. new thing um, looked... I, I agree. I, I do like the design. It doesn't hard In Pacific. I mean, excuse me. In, in the 2014 Godzilla movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking. Yeah. Okay. I just saw yeah. a piece of footage of it of him um, rising up, and he yeah. and he looks like a guy it's, getting up. Yeah, it's it's badass. Yeah. Um, I, one of the most one of the coolest things I've ever seen, and it was not part of the movie was the trailer for that new Godzilla where they had Oppenheimer's speech going on yeah. over. I was like, that that's exactly what Godzilla is about. Should have been. So I kind of... I kind of didn't like that the Godzilla in the 2014 movie winds up being a good guy. Because mm-hmm. I was like, this is what Godzilla is, man. He's, yeah. he's a force of nature. He's like, this is this is what you fuckers get for making the bomb. <laughs> uh, what about you, Brian? Yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. I probably it seems like I liked it more than than Langley, but uh, um, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I, I thought they did a nice job of uh, paying an homage to Japan because you have you have different things on in the world, and, and Japan plays a, a major role in the film. Um, it comes back to something you said, Tom, earlier, where Godzilla is basically protecting his turf, mm-hmm. so in a way he becomes kind of that hero again. But I don't find him. I, I find him as the, shall we say, an anti-hero, right? I don't find him heroic in the sense of some of those earlier uh, '60s, '70s Godzilla movies. Um, but yeah, I definitely liked it. I thought they did a good job. I mean, way better than the '98 Godzilla movie, which sure. I really didn't like at all. Yeah. And all at big least big that, big. yeah, and that one's like that's not even Godzilla. I, I didn't like the creature design. They should have just named and, something else, and I would have liked it better. Yeah. yeah. Giant iguana creature or something, right. but yeah, this this Godzilla at least is in the ballpark with Godzilla films, and I liked it. And speaking of trailers, there was a when they had the Godzilla trailer. One of the things I thought was rather cool is remember that part where they have these guys jumping out. It's like it's like like yeah. the sky seems to be on fire, and they're jumping out of the plane. They call yeah. it the halo drop. Yeah, 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 the halo drop. And there and, and what was cool about that was very eerie. And of course, I hadn't seen the film yet. I just saw the trailer. But they were using that very eerie music from 2001: A Space Odyssey when they yes. discovered the monolith. And I thought, like, man, that's just really cool. So, I, I, you know, I was really looking forward to the movie. And would I call it a four star movie? Uh, no, but I think it's a really good, solid three star movie. And I'm looking forward to the, to the next one, which yeah. I think is supposed to be out in 2018. Cool. The um, that Halo drop, an- another movie that that they use that in that is fucking cool is um, Rob Bauman's Reign of Fire. Hmm. They drop yeah. these people from above on top of coming, dragons. Coming down on the dragon. And it's, yeah. It's so cool. There was so, in that movie, I wanted so much more of that. Um, yeah, that's an interesting movie. It's kind like of sort movie. of works, but I, yeah, it's kind I, of fun. I mean, there are moments in that movie, this is not a guy's you, but there are moments in that movie that, that bug me with a whole like, uh, I mean, I get it intellectually. It's like when they're acting out Star Wars for the kids, you know? Yeah, the or, new mythology. The new mythologies, right, right, right. Um, but then, on the other hand, Matthew McConaughey has never been cooler. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
just the 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 way they they handled the dragons was really really cool. Yeah. So it's a no. It's a it's a really cool movie. Some would argue that it is a gaiju movie because it's giant, giant dragons monsters. are yeah, dry, cool. giant dragons gaiju. If they're big enough, yeah, sure. I mean, like Reference like I say, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to I want to mention one classic Japanese gaiju um, before we start moving on, and that's Mothra. Yeah, I was gonna say mention that as one of my favorites, but it just seems sort of middle of the road. Well, Mothra, unlike a lot of these guys, like a lot of these guys start out their their film career as bad guys and become good guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mothra was kind of a good guy from the beginning. Um, Those little twins. Yeah. I, I believe Mothra's a female. Yeah. Mothra's was yeah. it? Because mm-hmm. it yes. has the baby. The baby caterpillar right. thing. Mothra's kind of like the phoenix. Like, there's, it, it has this life cycle. It's like it's born, it grows. Because in some movies, Mothra is a caterpillar. Yeah. And right. yeah. it stays a caterpillar. Like, like. Uh, Ghidra, the three-headed monster. Mothra stays this caterpillar through the whole mm-hmm. movie. That was the one where it just it covers them in silk. Right? Yeah, it just sprays. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Sprays That's a silk. great movie. That is, yeah. <laughs> That's a great right? movie. Right? It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, Langley, well, if Mothra's a female character and protects Japan, using your interesting takes on what that means, yeah. what does that mean? The, the female protection and the male destruction, right? Exactly. Ex- exactly. Yes, I, I think I think she uh, well, I think she represents the concept of reincarnation as you find in Buddhism. Okay, <laughs> there you go. See, that's what I was fishing for. Thank you. This yeah. is amazing. <laughs> yeah. it, it really is. I, I think she does <laughs> because like, we've got Rodan as the as the uh, suicide uh, monster. Right. Films that you I like know. that. These films that you know and you love, and then like someone else comes along and goes, "Well, what I thought is," and it's like. Did we even watch the same movie? Hey, hey, somebody right now who's listening to the show is going to do a doctoral dissertation on this. <laughs> probably, That's absolutely probably, right. Probably get, a, get their degree. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I love that um, Mothra is, I mean, the only time that Mothra does any kind of real destruction is when, um, you know, her worshippers on Infant Island are threatened. They get fucked with, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I mean, like in 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 Ghidra, the three headed monster, you know, she the twins are kind of you know they're, they're Godzilla and Rodan are, are you know like fuck you, I'm fighting you, and I'm fighting you back, and the twins are like, hey, we got a real problem over here that you guys need to come and help us out and address, and they're mm-hmm. like, fuck you, we're fighting each other, and so Mothra, this caterpillar, way way outclassed, is like. I gotta help. I gotta help save you know the world. Now mm-hmm. I'm gonna go sh- shoot silk on this thing that can destroy me with its wings, with its teeth, with its lightning. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually, Godzilla and Rodan do come and, and help. But but at first they're they're, they're like the like, Americans. Exactly. Sooner or later they always come and they right. come and yeah. help. But it's eventually. months to pass yeah. when they should. You gotta bomb their their <laughs> their naval base first hey. before they before they get involved. Uh, the the twins are referred to as the uh, I believe the pronunciation is uh, Shobijin, which means yeah. small beauties. Yes, small what? Small beauties. Okay. Yep. And now I thought that was kind of cool. And they had that song yeah. too. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like it's like a Bollywood movie. <laughs> you can add in the that's song. the thing. That's the thing about Mothra, which I thought was cool, was that you know she had these sidekicks. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Had her own theme I, that, song. I, I always liked that. I always thought that was neat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was. They, clever. Were, they were. They were the 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 liaison for humans, right? They 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 could the ambassadors. Kind yeah. Of. Exactly. Exactly. And say, hey, this is this is what she's saying in her big bug way. Um, I want to bring up uh, Garuda, which was made in Thailand, which I know nothing about, but <laughs> I want to mention that it's. It was made in Thailand. I'm a lot of these were made, or not a lot, but there's a good handful that were made in um, uh, North Korea, South Korea. Kim Kim Jong Il, you were talking about, right? Uh, off mic had made it a gaiju movie. Yeah, and I, I we've mentioned it before on the show, and and I'd have to. I didn't. I didn't look it up prior to the show because I was so excited about um, Japanese culture being represented in Rubber Monsters. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, he did. He 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 made a a big monster movie, and I I just find that endlessly fascinating. That you know that a dictator. I mean, when you, when you think about it, it's like okay, I'm I'm in charge, and I have the big giant toy box. Um, this is what I'm going to do. So I guess it's not that weird. I just don't know if it's any good or not. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. I I don't see. Yeah, I've never seen it. Much. I, I would be surprised if you could even find that on. There's clips on. Format. Well, there's something. Yeah, Bulgasari. It looks like I have that listed down here. 1985. Something's bogus. What did you? What? What is Bulgasari. it? Bulgasari. Uh, <laughs> in feudal Korea, the evil king becomes aware that there is a peasant rebellion. Blah blah blah. He steals all the iron farming tools. I, I guess he makes this big giant do. Kim Jong Il produced it. Yeah. What, when, what year is this? 1985. Was America blamed? But, but I mean, that would be kind of funny. Uh, probably. Kind of You're probably yeah, it's America's uh, fault. Uh, the giant thing running around destroying our country. After he returns to the, 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 his last creation is a figurine of a monster, Pulgasari, a Godzilla-like creature that eats iron. The blood of his daughter be, brings the creature to life. Blah 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 blah. blah. Fights the poor, starving. Well, yeah. Iron's very important in a healthy diet. Yeah. The imperialist Americans. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. I mean, essentially, that's what uh, the filmmaker did. His love of gaiju led him to Cloverfield. Right. Who well, I'm thinking is that that's Abrams. Abrams, right? yeah, yeah. J.J. Abrams. And he admits that. That, and I want to say Super 8 is the same sort of thing, right? Super 8 was a big monster, right? Super 8 was, is an alien movie. Okay. Uh, uh, Super 8 so is, is much more... Oh, yeah. yeah. Spielberg well, was behind... Well, did, he didn't direct it, though, but he was behind no, no, it, was, didn't he? Abrams directed it. it it's, it's definitely Abrams' love letter to the Spielberg films of the 80s. Yeah, to so think Spielberg produced it or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, it, it, you know, it's, it's got Spielberg all over it, just as Poltergeist did. Mm-hmm. Um, and before before we move on, I just want to make one statement. I don't think there's any other country that is as intimately involved with its monsters as Japan. They love their monsters. Absolutely. Well, I think it's also because in their in like Shintoism and and in a lot of the religious sides of things, there is the yokai, and they they're they're a culture that's grown up with. Goblins, goblins and fairies and monsters, and yeah. monsters that are inherent and. To have a giant one, it's the same way they embrace have embraced something like Hello Kitty. There are, I mean, there's a city in Japan that's the home of Godzilla. There's right. giant Godzillas Dude, everywhere. Right? I, w- I would argue that without that 1954 Godzilla movie, which is the first time we see this stuff, we, we wouldn't have Pokemon, we wouldn't have half of the things that we have. That well, have. again, Pokemon, I think, comes from the yokai because they're little demons that mm-hmm. are, you can be used, can be used to your benefit. And what, that's essentially what Pokemon are. You, oh, they're, they're kept in your little... Right. What, I don't know, however that fucking works. Yeah, that ball. And then they, they fight each other, like these, this versus this. this yeah. Versus, and it's all about what abilities they have and... and, and they're so imaginative when it comes to these creature designs. It just gets crazy. It's no yeah, one. Remember that uh, Hedera, the the smog monster. Oh my yeah. god! Okay, I have a smog monster story if I can share. It. Who, else has, who else has a smog monster? Yeah. Plus, what I want to hear his take on it afterwards, like how it goes into his fascism and uh, <laughs> born again Buddhism and. Uh, uh, well, I mean, that I movie doesn't have it to that. It's just an indictment of, of pollution. Um, uh, first movie I ever saw in the theater. Um, it was a double feature. It was the um, Dr. Fives Rises Again. Sure. And Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster. Sure. My elder sister um, took me to go see it. Um, <laughs> t- t- took me to go see those two. Um Wound up falling in love with Vincent Price. I, I'm I'm like four or five. It's 1970, 71 maybe. It's 1971, I think. Um, but uh, she made me cry. She made me cry because there's at one point where the smog monster buries Godzilla in, a, in an avalanche. Yeah. And and he's buried, and she's like, she's leaning over, and she's like, hey, hey. Godzilla's dead, man. That's it. That's it. Godzilla's dead. The smog monster kills Godzilla. 
Yeah. And I'm like, you did not. Well, we can go now. Okay, yeah. Wouldn't that be fucked if she like, got up and laughed? Oh, yeah. Like, she, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Godzilla didn't die. And Godzilla flies in that movie, actually. Does he really? Yeah, he tucks his tail up between his legs. Sure he does. Breathes his radioactive <laughs> breath out and flies backwards through the air. Sure he does. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. You know, I forgot to mention, too, that uh, you know, I mentioned Doctor Who. Doctor Who was in King Kong versus Godzilla. What? But it was the villain was called Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, a different one. <laughs> so it's like yeah, but he was called Doctor Who. That was it was Doctor Who. Yeah, it's a little little trivia for you Doctor Who fans out there. Doctor Who <laughs> was featured in King in Kong versus Godzilla. All, but in the middle of it all, Tom yeah. Baker comes st- stumbling in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was the main villain and uh, who was behind uh, the he because he created. The mechanical Kong, or Mechani Kong, I think they call it. Mm-hmm. Mecha Kong. King Kong had a had had a fight. In, yeah. Um, uh, I'm gonna throw later. Out he there. did that. In King Kong escapes. Escapes. Uh, monsters and monsters, Dark Continent. Right. Um, essentially, guys, you movies, um, uh, sort of made in the wake of the popularity of Cloverfield. Right. Big, uh, big. In the, in the first one, there were big tentacle things. It kind of reminded me of. They were very similar. Yeah. They, the, the, they were like beings that made no sense, like structurally. Yeah. And that's what my one of my problems, and we've talked about this before on the show, is um, with Cloverfield was that the monster just it didn't look like it would exist move in time and space. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that always ruins it. For me. I the only the only beef I have with Cloverfield is it's a found footage movie. It's like God damn it, make make a movie. Don't Why don't you just take your drama, mean. Yeah, I mean, make a movie. Don't run around with a video camera. Um, it's funny because the Muto monsters in the new Godzilla remind me of Cloverfield. Mm-hmm. I, that was that was another thing I didn't like about the new Godzilla is like why do we have these? Why why are we fighting these other monsters? I want a movie about Godzilla. Yeah. Well, and that that reminds me too. You were asking about uh, when King Ghidorah was a heroic type monster. Yeah. Um. So I looked it up, and it was uh, it was the movie was called Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah: Giant Monsters All Out Attack. Wow. Two thousand one. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Apparently he was he was a he was the first and only time he was somewhat heroic. Even the Punisher was a good guy now and again. So. <laughs> well, if you're if you're around long enough, eventually, you know, you you gotta you gotta change things up to make it more exciting, right? The right. villain becomes the hero, or the hero becomes the villain. It makes sense. Oh, well, yeah, it's weird that it's such a huge, there's so many movies in this subgenre, but as we're clipping through archetypes, we're just burning through them. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. My list I, here. There, there's there's so many, and and we're not even talking about the giant. Robot movies. Well, here's one that I have a question about. Is it? No, it's a big bug movie. Tarantula, 1955. Sure. It's a big bug movie, not a gaiju. Well, no, well, it's not yeah. Destroying cities. It's just destroying small rural towns. <laughs> <laughs> Don't confuse that with Earth versus the Spider. Because remember, one of those movies has Clint Eastwood in it. Yeah, right, as that's a uh, fighter pilot. Yeah. Yeah, he drops the napalm on the bug. I think that's the better of the two. Yeah, was uh, Tarantula. Interestingly enough, Earth versus the Spider. So I think Tarantula is like fifty five, and Earth versus the Spider I think is late fifties, fifty eight maybe. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting to me when you watch a lot of movies uh, from that era, as you get into the late fifties, there's a lot of teenager stuff going on, right? Right. So in Earth versus the Spider, the, they they drop a bunch of, they find this bug in a cave, this giant spider in a cave, and they drop a bunch of DDT on it, and then they bring it back for whatever reason, because, well, I guess it makes sense. They bring it back to the high school gym. Right. I remember that. And it wakes up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it wakes up because, like, there's kids playing rock and roll, getting ready for a dance. Fucking rock and right. roll, man. Yeah, rock and roll woke up that bug, and then, uh, you know, he went on a crazy rampage. Yeah. I mean, The Blob is yeah. essentially yeah. a teenage movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's even a sci-fi movie called Teenagers from Outer Space. Yeah. Um, so, so teenagers got a lot of play towards the end of the 50s. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of that Bird Eye Gordon giant mm-hmm. people stuff. Or um, movies. One of my favorite teen horror movies, Valley of the Giants with Bo yeah. Bridges yeah. and Ron Howard. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great, like, 
uh, there's kids in the room. Yeah. <laughs> and I still want to watch something kind of groovy. So, yeah. Yeah. And then it's interesting, a lot of these movies, like that movie and the Gamera movies, these days I'll rewatch them, but I always watch them via MST3K. Yeah, sure. You know? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, and you know, there was a lot of that giant bug stuff. There was the Deadly Mantis, mm-hmm. where we have this giant praying mantis, which, by the way, we have giant praying mantis in um, Son of Godzilla, or, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, and they had like the was the, they had a, I think it was I think it was called the giant claw which was like just a big ugly looking vulture big, type creature goofy bird yeah. with like this yeah. tuft of hair on his head yeah the giant yeah. claw yeah yeah but then it comes back the to like claw. American like like it what was the one the Harryhausen with the giant um, uh, octopus octopus it came from beneath uh, the sea so that's yeah, it came that's from a straight up gaiju movie even sure. though it's not yeah. 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 Again, uh, going back to this whole idea that th- these these movies started in America, right? Uh, it, it's kind of like it's kind of like jazz. You know, there was a. I wish. So I went to a piano. I was uh, I was at Monster Palooza this last weekend. Oh yeah. There was a big Godzilla panel there. Um, where they had the the guy who originally wore the suit, he's still alive and kicking, and he was there. Um, there was a, a whole a whole panel dedicated to this. But at the same time, there was a panel um, for the Frankenstein Complex, which is a documentary that I've been tracking for the last two years, three years, um, that these guys have been making about uh, people who make monsters. You know, why 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 do we want to make monsters? And they brought up something um, that I thought was really interesting, and, and it, because they're they're French filmmakers, and they were pointing out that the monster movie really is an American art form. It later went on, and, and people did it all over the world. But the monster movie started here with things like The Lost World, King Kong. Mm-hmm. Even though George Millet was a, uh, a special effects guy that was doing stuff early on, but he didn't really make monster movies, and um, they pointed out something that I thought was really interesting, that the, the word that is most associated with movies in America is entertainment. And the, your root word there is enter. You're inviting the audience to come in and be part of this experience. You're, you're wanting to entertain them. And then they, they use the French word that's dis- used to describe how, what cinema kind of is. And I can't remember the name of it, but, it, but its root word was diver- um, um, divert. Okay. Divert. And so the point that they brought up was that French filmmakers are more, it's more like a magic trick. Mm-hmm. They're diverting the audience's attention. They're, they're, it's more of a sub, subversion. And I think that that is most clearly demonstrated in these American monster movies that we eventually get to the giant bug movies. <laughs> this is your very you heavy know, tonight. I, I am, I am. Go ahead, Brian. You know, we... We didn't mention, um, speaking of spider movies, well, some years back, I think the early 2000s, uh, did you guys see the movie Eight-Legged Freaks? I love that movie! Yeah, David Arquette and Scarlett Johansson was in that movie. Yeah. Then there's also, what, what is that, the, the new Mike, the, the Mike, is it Mike Mendez, the Big, big Ass Spider? spider. Yeah. Big Ass Spider's yeah. fun, too. I mean, it's, it's done, you know, tongue-in-cheek, but... The it, only thing that, the, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, go ahead. No, it's, I'm just saying it's, it's fun. Yeah, I was going to say, um, the only thing that I, I wish they would have done with Eight-Legged, Freak, Eight-Legged Freaks is that they would have said it in the 50s. Yeah. I thought it might have, I, I thought it might have worked better. Because like, they, they go to a shopping mall, right? They, they kind of, which we've kind of been down that path, right? Barricading right. yourself in the shopping mall. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I thought it was fun. I, I definitely enjoyed it. It's it a was blast. definitely done with tongue-in-cheek. Well, and, and the cool thing is it is paying homage to these giant bug movies of the 50s, which, again, comes out of... Fear of the bomb, radiation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, uh, do, does anybody remember? Um, oh shit, I can't remember it now. Uh, Peter, <laughs> Peter Graves. Well, you obviously. Peter Graves, giant grasshoppers. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw that movie. Yeah, what was that thing called? What is that um, called? Um, Keep talking. I'll look for it. It's like yeah, the, day the world ended, or yeah, I, like yeah, something, something like that. The, the day, yeah, something with end in it. But I just thought it was awesome that there were, you know, that giant grasshoppers were, you know, a uh, beginning of the beginning end. of the end. That's yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. Seven. Yep. 
Peggy Castle's in that movie. It's it's great, man. I mean, it's great in yeah, it's fun. Giant Bug movie. Another one that's on MST2K. What? They did an episode. Yeah. There was so you many. Know, the sad thing about a lot of those movies, though, you can't see those because uh, um, those guys don't have the rights to some of this stuff anymore. Well, you know, th- like there's a film um, called Cro- Kronos. It's, it's about it's parts, the Klonos horror or something. Oh, like yeah, 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 yeah. And it's completely out of print, and the only way you could see it is, is through Mystery and, MST3K. Yeah. Just like there's a couple of films that you can get on the Elvira thing mm-hmm. under her label where she keeps interrupting with her, her little right, rant. Right. But some of those, it's the only way you can get your hands on those. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, oh, that reminds me of something. Go ahead. Um, Are we going to talk about Pacific Rim or? Sure, we can talk about. Pacific yeah, Rim. and I wanted to. I wanted to. To you know, to in in so far in most of these cases, we've been talking about movies with quote unquote cheesy effects. I love them, but you know, they're guys in rubber suits or um, you know a matted you know image of a tarantula walking across and sometimes sometimes the mat doesn't work and he's kind of see through and you can see that the landscape behind him and stuff um when we get to you know we get to modern films we're we're treating the subject matter seriously and we're treating it with um the whatever the top of the line effects work is at that time um and pacific rim i think is interesting because Guillermo del Toro wanted to make a movie that echoed the Jap- the giant Japanese monster movies. Mm. So he specifically, even though all the creatures were CGI, he specifically used designs where they could have been men in suits. Yeah. That was important to him. Did, did Brian, did you like Pacific Rim? I did. Did you? I loved Pacific Rim, yeah. I did on the first viewing. Second viewing, not so much, but... I did enjoy the first one. It's a, it's, I think as long as you realize it's supposed to be a big, fun action movie, yeah. then you're fine. Yeah, me being me, second viewing, I'm like, wait a minute, why do you need two guys up there? But, <laughs> I mean, they explained it, but it was just like, I get it. Cinematically, yeah, that makes sense. Sure. Um, but they're... But well, I do, cool. I do think you've got to turn your brain off a little bit on exactly. some of these things, right? Exactly. But then, usually on second and third viewings is when that kind of stuff starts tapping me on the shoulder and it what's, becomes hard. What's really cool about Pacific Rim is we, we kind of get a, a double dose of, of a genre. Mm-hmm. Uh, the giant the giant robot movie or mm-hmm. the giant robot as a vehicle uh, a mecha um, and the giant monster movie and it's a, it's a Lovecraftian thing too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, there, it, and it's a, it's a nice film visually to watch and there's enough things going on in it um, that I that that hooked me, like because if you watch the Transformers films, I don't really have. I mean, I, I've seen all of them, but I don't really have a desire to go back and watch them again. Yeah, right? the Pacific problem, Rim, I'd go, I'd watch again. The problem with Transformers is that there's just uh, there's way too much going on, and they don't there's not enough context, and they don't they don't stage all the fight scenes real well. I I so I, it becomes this blur of imagery, then you can't tell anything. Absolutely. Sure. Um, with Pacific Rim, though, we get. Come on, uh, uh, ship uses baseball bat. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh shit. Well, yeah, Tom. That's a good point because like in Pacific Rim you can follow the action, but in Transformers it's like it's just eye candy bursting at you. It's yeah. just this swirling know, metal what? and shit. Yeah. Blurry and yeah, I don't. Yeah. I saw the first it's one. It's hard to get engaged. I'm not gonna watch any more of these. Yeah. Yeah. Don't got the time. Don't got the time. Yeah. Unless it's Godzilla versus the Transformers. No, fuck that. No, oh wow. Well, no. I think I, 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 I'd see it. Would you? <laughs> yeah, I'm easy, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to see what we've sort of missed out on. There's a couple of things that I've not seen. Zokor the Invader, one of my favorite names of all time. Craw, the sea monster. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Zorko the Invader. What country is that? Um, it's a direct-to-video film. Oh, it's any country you want it to be. Any country you want it to be. There's like Yamato Takeru, aka Orochi the Eight-Headed Dragon. There's the South Korean Yungari films. Um, 
Ultraman c- kept coming up, and I don't remember, but I guess there is giant monsters in Ultraman. Sure, in almost every oh, episode, yeah. Ultraman's fighting some yeah. rubber monster. Yeah. I can please There's please even talk. a series called Spectre Man, similar to Ultraman. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Does, does anybody remember Inframan? Yeah, Inframan. Yeah. That yes. was great yeah, stuff. Absolutely. But again, it all falls into that same, Yeah. you know, especially this even stuff. The, Go ahead. Even uh, I was gonna say even the, there's a Danish movie called Reptilicus, early yeah. 60s. Yeah, Reptilicus which is, is not cool. good. It yeah. is cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you're uh, I, I guess I, I'll have to watch that again then, boys, because I'm misremembering it apparently. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it wasn't cool. Um, Brian, you were mentioning uh, uh, an English. Uh, oh yeah, Gorgo. Gorgo, that's right. Yeah, did you so, see that one? It's just trying to protect their baby, man. Sure. Yeah, that's what was cool. That was a little like Twilight Zone trick at the end, right? It's like, oh, it's not really a monster. It's a it's a baby monster, and the right. mom wants to protect it. Right, right. Yeah, but that was pure, almost Godzilla-like creature. There was there was an English King Kong movie too, basically called Konga. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's a guy again, a guy in a monkey suit, you know, smashed <laughs> then. Um, I don't remember liking that one very much. There was the giant behemoth. Yeah. yeah. I've got some well, the giant, the giant behemoth. Yeah, that that's a Harryhausen movie, right? No, uh, Willis uh, O'Brien. Willis O'Brien. Oh, that's Willis what, O'Brien. Okay. Yeah, one of the movies that he wound up doing that he got paid like almost nothing for. The budget was tiny. They they skinned the stop motion model with like dead iguana skin. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you do? Yeah. Um, has anyone seen Gappa, the Trifibian monster? Uh, the name oh, Gappa I, sounds... I haven't been that fortunate to see that movie. Sorry. Sounds so familiar, but The name Gappa it. sounds really familiar, yeah. but then I started thinking, am I thinking that or Mario Brothers? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Langley, is, is Mighty Joe Young, is that is that Willis O'Brien? Uh, Mighty Joe Young is Willis O'Brien and Ray Harryhausen. Ray Harryhausen got uh, um, employed as the assistant to Willis O'Brien um, yeah. on that film, but he wound up doing about 95% of the animation... Um, and, and, and some other guys did some animation, too. Pete Peterson worked on it. Um, I think even Marcel Delgado, who built the puppets, animated a scene in it. So it, it's uh, the, it's under the umbrella of Willis O'Brien. He was in charge, but it was Ray Harryhausen's first um, feature film, basically. That's some good knowledge, Langley. That's why people listen to this show. Is that? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, how about... Varen the Unbelievable. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's totally believable. It's, it's, I'm sure he is. <laughs> it's this funny looking monster with like crazy ears. Um, sure. The, it, yeah. There's... You know, one of the things that they re- mentioned here, and I don't, I don't necessarily agree, and that's why I took it out, but I decided to mention is Matango, the mushroom attack on the mushroom people. Yeah. They're, they listed it on a new number of lists during when I was doing research, and I just don't see it. Um, there's also is there a giant monster. In that? I don't remember that. I don't remember the gi- mushrooms are kind of large, aren't they? I mean, yeah. <laughs> as I recall that, I mean that's, 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 that's yeah. yeah that was, I saw that some years ago. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of a fun of, movie. That would be like throwing the green slime in here, as yeah. a, you know, but it's not. It's. Um, I'm which, just trying to see what we have missed before we well, move on to something else. You know, I mean, in in recent years, I really like the movie Big Man Japan. Big Man Japan is. Fun. It is it's fun. Super fun. His new movie out is super good too. Him being the director, who uh, I don't remember his yeah. name. Um, <laughs> what, what I like about Big Man Japan is that it it's taking these tropes from these movies and totally playing with them. Um, Are you familiar, Brian? No, I'm not. No, uh, I haven't seen that. I mean, I've seen some of the the uh, Attack on Titan stuff. As oh, as newer stuff. I wanted to talk about that also. Uh, Big Man Japan yeah, I haven't seen that. Is, is, is really cool because it's, it's, um, uh, it's about a guy who he, he can transform into this big giant that um, at one time kind of defended Japan from monsters. And now in, in this society, it's now evolved to where it's, it's a TV show. Oh! And they fight, he fights monsters each week. Um, but he's just a regular guy. Right. Yeah. He's giant, but he's a bigger guy. Director's name is Hitoshi Matsumoto. He ha- his new movie or latest movie is a movie called R100. Mm. 
<clears throat> R100 is a great movie. It's it's um if you ever if you're familiar with Quitters Incorporated from Stephen King, right. where a, a guy wants to quit smoking, so he signs on to the service. This is a service. Some, this mild mannered Japanese salary man signs on to where at random intervals at his job and at his home and out and about dominatrixes will show up. Oh and yeah, beat the <laughs> shit out of them. Yes. And it's it's wow. hilarious. Yeah. Um, but it's great. That happens to me all the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he did Big Man Japan, and that Big Man Japan is is worth checking out. It's a solid movie. It's weird monster designs. It's just so bizarre. It's it's a very what crazy... uh, what year is that? Oh, I just closed it. Uh, I want to say two thousand nine, something maybe? like that. Yeah, it's it's not old. Okay. It's not brand new. It's R one hundred is I want to say twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen. Yeah. So, um, so I'm I'm running out of titles here. Well, let can we talk about TV? It, it's rep, or are you? Do you have something else? I was I was going to mention the the live action Attack on Titan. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Um, That's a good way to move on because it is taking the same technology that they did with these older movies. It's essentially people in suits and, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing and puppetry and taking it into the digital age and doing a great job, at least visually of this marriage of practical and digital effects. It's, it's beautiful. The, 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 it's very fun. Very cool. A little disturbing. It's very disturbing. Absolutely. Well, yeah. have you seen any of this, Brian? I've only seen the animated stuff. I have not seen the live action stuff. Live action stuff, stuff uh, wild. It, yeah, I mean they they came like I don't I didn't I didn't find it playing around here anywhere. I mean I I remember when these things were coming out, like the movie would play like maybe for a week somewhere and be disappear, right? So I never right. got a chance to see those. It, although I wanted, aren't there a series of them? There there's supposed to be a second one, and I have not seen or heard anything about it. Um, okay. Fans generally, what I get is fans of the of the anime um, don't like it, um, which you know I, I think yeah, it's fair, they're you know, just whiny yeah. bitches. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I, I'm not a fan of the anime. I didn't watch the anime, um, but some. Why of, are you not a fan if you didn't watch it? I mean, how how do you know if it's good or bad? I'm not a fan of anime in general. Um, oh, okay. Uh, uh, so. Um, in general, I, I, I'm going to qualify that and say there is some anime that Because otherwise that I, you're going to get an really, avalanche. Well, I'm also I'm, I'm doing a panel at this anime convention coming up. so uh, I, <laughs> That's great. I'm not a fan of anime, but I'm in a panel at an anime convention. That, that makes sense. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Fortunately, my panel has nothing to do with anime. so Good, good. No, yeah, There's like the people like uh, Space Battleship Yamato, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And then there's a live action of that. But I thought the live action wasn't bad. Yeah, it looks, yeah. It's, it's good. I, I highly suggest that you, you, you're you going to have to probably do some tracking around on the internet, Brian, to see it. But you, yeah. should, you should see Attack. No, I do want to see it. That's how I found it. Um, yeah, I'm sure it'll, it'll come out on DVD or Blu-ray yeah. at, at some point. Um... TV, I just, most of what I found on TV was uh, Ultraman and Godzilla. Sure. Um, and when you say Godzilla, you're talking about animated shows? Yeah. Cartoons? Well, not specifically. For Godzilla, yes. It yeah. was mostly, there wasn't a, a live action Godzilla movie on or a t- TV, series. TV show. But there were, there were plenty of cartoons. Right. Talking about that love of their of their gaiju, and it, 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 I mean, kids grew up with. There was a Saturday morning um, American Godzilla cartoon that mm-hmm. I watched when I was, I don't know what age I was, but um, it had a great song. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it had it had this little this little version of Godzilla named Godzuki. Godzuki, yeah. I remember Godzuki. Yeah. Um. So there's that, uh, Brian. I, uh, you're the comics guy. How are how are these? Yeah, rep- yeah. I mean, outside of the outside of the films, probably the comics is what I'm most familiar with. Um, <clears throat> Marvel Comics, late '70s, they did a series called Godzilla King of the Monsters. I think it was like 24 issues, maybe. Mm-hmm. And of course, that's Godzilla the, in the, the sorry to Go interrupt, ahead. but that's the stuff. If you look at the cover of all that stuff, the aforementioned Jeff Zorno. The, oh, okay. The the guy I mentioned at the beginning of the show. Cool. Go ahead. Uh, and of course, it's, he's in the Marvel Universe, so he's meeting various Marvel Is he really? Heroes. Yeah. 
Godzilla's yeah. in the Marvel universe. Marvel, yeah, Lots yeah. Just like, if, you, if you go online, you could see some of the covers. And, like there's an, I think there's an Avengers cover online where Godzilla's like smashing wow. through some buildings. Wow. Yeah. So so so, so they. Yeah, it's, wow. it's yeah. kind of funny, but because um, like Marvel, oh. and the same thing about Marvel is that they got a lot of film properties. Which they never really knew kind of how to handle it properly. Right, I remember. Maybe, do you remember Marvel two thousand one: A Space Odyssey? Yeah, that was drawn by Jack Kirby. Yeah, crazy. Um, but it, but it's Kirby, so it's kind of interesting. But but yeah, I mean, uh, probably their most successful series probably was Star Wars. But they even got kind of crazy with that after a while. Um, but um, after after Marvel, uh, Dark Horse. Uh, from I think the late 80s to late 90s, so 10, 12 years or so, they did a number of uh, series one shots. Uh, what's unique is if you like Arthur Adams, mm. he does an art, he does the artwork um, on. on some of the stuff. Yeah, so it's some cool stuff because he does really nice, detailed kind of cool things uh, with with um, with uh, Godzilla and 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 I definitely like those issues. And then um, uh, from 2010 to now, IDW has the um, uh, the rights to it. And what's kind of cool about IDW is, unlike the previous um, uh, Marvel and Dark Horse companies, they actually have rights to a number of Toho uh, movie monsters. Cool. Yeah. So so they're bringing them into all their issues. Now, they've done a number of miniseries and things since 2010. I've only read... Um, a handful, and there was the ones that I've read. It's called Godzilla: Kingdom of the Monsters. Uh, it was like twelve issues. Mm-hmm. What's interesting about that, and it kind of comes back into what we were talking about earlier, was although you get giant monster battles, which Langley will enjoy, um, it also deals with the monsters as massive destruction of the environment. So it's 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 like what would happen in a sense that. If somebody dropped a nuclear bomb in an American city, or the power grid went out, or there's a disease that suddenly is running rampant throughout the country, it, so it's kind of cool in that it, it shows you what happens to society when all these monsters come together, and it's done in a serious way, right? Sure. So, so, so I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, it addresses questions that people got angry over um, in, in Man of Steel, right? Hey, Superman and Zod are destroying the city, and that no one. What happens to all those people, right? Right. So, so in the series, it answers it answers some of those questions or deals with those questions. But the one series I really liked it was only five issues, but it's really cool, very different. It's called Godzilla, Gangsters, and Goliaths, and it's exactly what the title is. It's like the Yakuza, and and giant monsters, and it's really well done. I really like that series. Right. So, Very uh, cool. if people are not familiar with any of the IDW stuff, um, you might want to check that one out. I wanted but, to, but uh, yeah. So, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. No, no, I, I'm done. No, so that's that's my comic moment for people out there who enjoy comics. Cool. Well, what you what you said about um, the Yakuza and and like basically what you you've been talking about, I like exploring the idea of what's happening to society, what's happening to people, what's happening... If, 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 yeah, on the ground. Yeah, if monsters are tearing up Tokyo, um, you know, one, what's happening to the people in Tokyo, two, what's happening to, you know, how, how are we covering that in the news? And I mm-hmm. liked that about Pacific Rim, because these things were popping up all over the place, and... The other thing I liked was that it, it they had this like religion that kind of developed right. um, uh, around the kaiju, and they would use the kaiju um, skeletons as temples and yeah, things, yeah. and people were yeah. using the different things from the body for stuff. Mm-hmm. That's totally what would happen. Absolutely. It, same thing with zombies. It would yeah. totally happen with zombies as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing that's interesting about society is that you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, you're just watching monsters stomp on stuff. You know, you're not thinking about it, but you can't really make a movie now, it seems. As, again, Man of Steel has proven, you can't make a movie about major destructions of cities without answering those types of questions. Right. Uh, A couple of video games, believe it or not. Uh, From 1983 to the present, Toho has been putting out a steady stream of Godzilla video games. Sure. Um, Of course, the... Infamous Bally Midway Rampage 
was essentially a gaiju mm. attack. They're they're making a rampage movie. I hear with, mm. with The Rock, who I guess <laughs> will go to anything. Um, I mean, he made Tooth Fairy, so yeah, I know. King of the Monsters from SNEK in 1991. There's a bunch of Ultraman games. In uh, 1996, there was a game called Gamera 2000, which I assume you get to be Gamera. Cool. War of the Monsters in 2003. Uh, 2013, there was a bunch of Pacific Rim games. And uh, Sunstone Games has been putting out the last few years. The Fall of Nemesis, The Clash of the Gaigu Jin. Okay. Which, who knows what that is. I don't know. So neither do I. Yeah. So the video. It's, so I guess the point of all this is is that smallish subgenre mm-hmm. that has its tentacles. No, no pun intended. In just about everything. Well, yeah. I, I, again, I I think that this has spawned um, so many other things. I mean, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Pokemon, um, so many, um, so many of these well, also, of these things. Also, too, um, the 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 God, son of Godzilla, the Manila. Yeah. Right. Didn't he form a group called Manila? Manila. Stop. Manila. I know. Wait, no. you, well, you know, my understanding is he did, and then the thing was though, those little fairy <laughs> girls from the Mothra movies did the singing. I'm sorry. And. Is this that real? The end of that. I thought that, I thought no. you were making a Millie Vanilli joke. I am. That's exactly right. Okay, good, right. good, good, good. Yeah. So in general, in general, some is of us, this real? Yeah, yeah. I was ready to go. Really? They did not. <laughs> hey, I can produce Shintaru Katsu singing on multiple <laughs> records. So there you go. Um, so it's interesting that here we have three different people. Kind of fans, some more fans than others, and definitely some of us getting a different read on it than, sure. than others. Yeah, um, which is fascinating. I guess it sort of speaks to why it endures. Right. I think. I think it's it's um, it works on a lot of different. I mean, it, it, like I think any good successful thing works on several different levels. You can watch it for this, or you can watch it for that, or you can be like me and grasp at straws and try to find, you know, deeper things there. I, I think that that's what makes a successful um, movie a lot of times, yeah. is that, you know, different audiences can watch them for different reasons. Brian, closing thoughts on Gaiju before you move on to news? Well, um, yeah, I'm not kind of a fan. I'm, I'm definitely a fan. I, I, I enjoy these movies, and... Um, I, I think part of I would also add that that part of the reasons that they're popular is that they are fun. They're enjoyable. You can turn your brain off and go watch these things and have a good time. And, you know, p- uh, uh, ultimately, people want to have a good time when they go to a film. You know? I mean, sure. sometimes you go to the foreign movies, let's say, to see the artsy, you know, intellectual things. And then time, sometimes you just want to go and have some fun. You know, and these movies do that. Okay, right Right on. Uh, Moving on to news, um, I got a couple things. Number one, uh, Disney announced a shit ton of titles today that they're going to be doing in the next few years. I want to sort of mention them and get go around and get generic thoughts. Okay. Number one, Maleficent 2. Angelina Jolie is signed on, and they're going to do Maleficent 2. I liked... I like the initial, the, the first movie uh, well enough. I mean, it was fine. I've, I've never gone back and rewatched mm. it. Um, I like the metaphor of her losing her wings with right. Her. That was cool. That was um, very thoughtful. Yeah. Um, I I remember it came out the same time as Godzilla, and I remember saying Maleficent was more mm-hmm. enjoyable than Godzilla was. Brian, I like the film. I have some issues with it, but uh, I, I could. It was a great performance, and right. I'm I can understand why they would make a second one. I mean, sure. you could certainly use that character. I just don't know, uh, but, but yeah, I, what go the ahead. story is. What I they're going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going to join Captain America, the Avengers. Um, What's interesting to me is the number of uh, some of our best um, female actors all seem to be in the last five six years. They're all playing witches. Yeah, right. Yeah, we well, have a lot for of. You? It's, it's, I, I find that kind of interesting. It's like that's kind of. That's you got to make a if you're one of the better female actors out there. Um, that's, that's you're going to be a witch in a movie at some make point. A witch movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like if you want an Oscar, you do the 
mentally re- handicapped person. Uh, yeah, but never do the full version. Remember, we learned right, that from we learned, uh, we learned that. Tropic uh, Thunder. Yeah. Coming up, Cruella, starring Emma Stone. Uh, uh, she's Cruella. Yeah. Probably a young. They're gonna if it's if I'm I don't know nothing about this, but here's what my guess is: they're gonna wicked it. They're gonna do it like. It's it's Cruella de Vil in college and meeting people and how she became the awful person she was in 101 Dalmatians. That's my guess. Obviously, no one cares. My, I was going to say. Well, it's hard to get excited. It's just stupid. Okay. But I mean, oh. Disney Disney's got the golden touch. So yeah. I mean, I'm, well, I'm willing to cut them some slack. Need, but yeah, I, they're going to. It's hard to it. jump on that one. There's going to be a movie based on the, the Jungle Cruise ride starring The Rock. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Stop. It gets worse. I, I haven't even hit the hard stuff yet. Uh, well, there's lots of rides that Disneyland has that yeah. uh, um, they, should, they should make a movie of that Raiders of the Lost Ark ride they have. Right. Oh, wait a minute. They did. They did. Never mind. Uh, they're doing a movie called Tinkerbell with Reese Witherspoon. That's great. It's like a middle-aged she's, Tinkerbell. She's Tinkerbell? Yeah. Oh, she's a she's a middle aged Tinkerbell. No, no, no. <laughs> that's what you say she was. That's my joke. All I know is that it's oh my Tinkerbell. goodness, I was like, oh my god, oh, I hope not. Okay, yeah. So that's knows? like Hook. That was like Hook with uh, uh, when they had the older the older Peter Pan. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, that that wasn't. Here's one well, that I, I guess I, some people liked it. I have no idea why, but Mary Poppins too. Oh Jesus. Here's another head scratcher. Uh, We're almost done. Tim Burton's Dumbo. Good God. <laughs> will it be called real. Dumbo or will it be called Tim Burton's Dumbo? It Probably Tim, Tim Burton's, Burton's Dumbo. Dumbo. Here's the one wow. thing they announced that make, gives me hope. The, uh, uh, Ava DuVarney, who did Selma, is directing a version of A Wrinkle in Time. Okay. So that that has me interested. Sure. Okay. You don't care about this at all. I don't. I... Uh, today, you think that Disney will remake some of those classic animated movies, right? Well, I mean, now, they started. Yeah, they, they, they are. They made Cinderella. They're last doing year, it. They, which I thought was good. They just announced it today or yesterday that, based on the success of Jungle Book, you're going to see a whole nother ration of a live action fox and the hound a live action if you consider live action everything green screen little mermaid little mermaid sure lion king um two trailers got released today one was for the stephen king movie cell okay so did not see we i I looked at the trailer and part of my problem with it is that i you read the book. I read the book, and I enjoyed the first chunk of the book. Where usually it was it was different for King because usually King does all this character takes, building. Yeah, and takes forever. Takes forever, and you wind up caring about the people. So when bad shit starts happening to them, you care. This movie didn't was or this book wasn't like that. They, they dropped you right in, and then like on like page two, people are ripping each other's heads off and going crazy yeah. and ape shit and stuff. It's it's the idea is that there's this signal that goes out through cell phones. And if you happen to be on the cell phone at that time, you're if you, fucked. Back in the few years ago, there was a movie called The Signal. Right. That covered it's a lot very of the similar. Yeah, it's similar to The Happening as well. Yeah. Um, but then it gets all squirrely with what's going on. There's and a religion. And, and yeah, they're thinking we hive mind. And so, so I agree. I didn't like the, the, the latter part of the book. The trailer... Um, for people who like fast zombie movies, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. I, I just think it's, you know... I think the book was King's trying to do a zombie movie without doing a zombie movie. Right. It's like, it's a zombie movie up until the time that he takes that, that weird yeah. right turn. Right. Okay. Brian, you you didn't see the trailer, but are you familiar I with did the not. book? No, I'm not. Okay. Moving on. Um, Killing Joke trailer premiered. Whoops. Uh, I didn't even know they were making Killing Joke. Yeah, it's uh, it's animated. It's oh. Kevin Conroy is Batman. Mark Hamill is the Joker. It's the first uh, R-rated animated thing that they've done. Hmm. Um, it looks like it's hitting all the beats of the story, mm-hmm. but it's kind of. I'm just not in love with the animation style. The style. It's that same style they've been doing in a lot of the DC 
Was it that? Is it the same style like they did with the Batman cartoons TV yeah. series that Mark like, Hamill did? But it's, a, it's a little different. Yeah, if you see the the Dark Knight Returns they did, uh-huh. that that movie, it's a lot of that same animation okay. style. Yeah, uh-huh. the sad thing is, I wish they could capture. Because uh, I, I saw, I I didn't see the trailer, but I watched. It was uh, was it. Um, uh, Justice League versus the Teen Titans, mm-hmm. and so since that's the last animated uh, DC movie out, they always talk about the next one coming out. So I saw a number of sequences from okay. the Killing Joke. Um, I just wish somehow they could find a way to capture Brian Boland's art. Um, yeah. Art, yeah. I mean, I think I, agree. I think that would be cool. I mean, they always seem they talked about it and they would show you a lot of uh, pictures, um, and then then they'd show you how they animated the scene, but. It's- yeah, I, I, it, I was hoping for something that might be animated a little differently, uh, and like you just said, it, that doesn't seem the case. Not that I'm going to hold any hold that against it, um, but it'd be nice to, since you're going for an R-rated movie, maybe to do something a little differently. Than well, giving and, you that. And since I mean, it's it's totally possible. Like there may have been a time when they said well, we, we can't replicate this art and animation, but that's that's no longer the case. You totally yeah, can. they can do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine if the the Japanese took that on. Right. Right. Um, in the new, this is more you're not going to care about. Mm-hmm. Um, in the new X Men trailer, there's a allusion to there's a line where someone goes, "I had help," and you just see a hand come into the frame and claws come out. So they're alluding to Wolverine being in this. We don't really care about these X Men movies, do we? I don't. Brian, and Deadpool's in it. Are you a fan? Yeah, I've seen them all. Uh, some are better than others. Is, I, I mean, well, I'll pretty uh, go ahead. He's in all of them, but the thing of it is, is that they've been yeah. they've been keeping it a hidden that that he's going to be in this one because there's some there's some issue about them. They're trying to set up Hugh Jackman for Wolverine, the the sequel of Wolverine, which is going to be Dead Man Logan. Is that what it's called? What um, the series called Old, Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan. Old, and, old man Logan. Uh, they're, they're, so they're talking about doing that for Wolverine two or whatever it is. Right. Uh, but the fact that it's he's now in he's doing this thing. I don't know. It seemed it was a big deal. It seemed on a lot of news Some, sites. Someone someone's gonna really like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, Langley. Yeah, the other the other thing was uh, Iron Man being in the Spider Man movie, which yeah may be focus. No, no, they they they, they agree. They they released a scene today that features uh, Spider-Man fighting the Winter Soldier and the big reveal is that his voice sounds like he's 11. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Are you, are you talking about the, ne- the upcoming Captain America movie or are you yeah. talking about the Spider-Man, the next talking, Spider-Man movie? He's talking about Civil War. I'm Civil talking about War. A, a scene they released from uh, a oh, promo scene. Oh, yeah, because so, supposedly there's the, 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 the standalone Spider movie, the rumor's been that Iron Man's going to be in it. Yeah, so, okay. yeah. But that's apparently one of those bogus internet rumors. Okay. And then finally, um, it was announced today the creation of a streaming service called Filmstruck, which is kind of a cross between Turner Classic Movies and the Criterion Collection. That sounds badass. It it sounds like they're going to do super deep, deep movie pulls. Uh, It's a streaming service you have to pay for and that kind of thing. Right. But damn. but in other words, they I mean, what's the attraction? They're they're going to show you very good versions of these older movies with imagine, a lot of imagine, uh, imagine, bonus material. Imagine, yeah, imagine basically Netflix for these these certain movies. And what I think you'll see in the future, if it if it launches correctly, you'll see Criterion pulling their collection from Hulu. So this is the only way they can get it. Turner Classic yeah. movies. I mean, it's. Turner Classic Movies is the entire Turner collection, which is MGM and GMA right. and a sure. bunch of other people. So they've got this huge library, and it's not that they're going to be – it's my understanding. They're not programming it. It's that you are able to go watch these things, and some of them have been out of print forever. So, so. it's fascinating because it's another avenue for people to see movies that are hard to get. Right. So um, – Yeah. Yeah. So why do you there's have, a lot of Criterion movies that are that are out. Of, there are a lot of Criterion movies that are out of print, so to speak. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So winding up, let's go, we'll, we'll go around the table real quick for what we've been watching. Any recommendations? Does anyone want to start? Um, I picked up finally um, the DVD of uh, Kevin McTurk's The Mill at Calder's End. 
um, which is a, a puppet film. It's mm-hmm. a short film. Um, it's a it's for for folks who like this kind of stuff. It's kind of a, a bonus deal because you also get the narrative of Victor Carlock, which was his first puppet film. Um, uh, amazing, just jaw droppingly amazing. It's no wonder that this thing has won so many film festivals. It is beautiful. It is gorgeous. If you're a fan of puppets, if you're not a fan of puppets, these are great, great short films, and I highly recommend checking them out. The Mill at Calder's End is what you want to look for. Cool. Is that it? By Kevin McTurk. That's that's all I've been watching. I haven't had time for it. Oh, because you were at Monster Blue. I was at Monster I want to come back to that. Okay. Brian. Uh, yeah, I've seen um, uh, two movies in the last few weeks. Uh, one is called Eye in the Sky, which uh, essentially is about a, a group of people. The United States, uh, Britain, is involved in launching a drone strike in which civilian casualties will probably come about. And so it's kind of a morality tale. I thought it was a interesting movie. It's got some good performances. Helen Mirren, Alan Rickman's final movie. Um, Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad's in there. Um, I, I could recommend it. I thought it was uh, I thought it was solidly done. Um, and then the other one coming back, back to something talk about Disney is The Jungle Book, and oh, okay. um, I saw that, and uh, that's doing very very well. I think it's only been out for two weeks. It's made over five hundred million dollars, I believe, you, and I definitely enjoyed it. I thought it was quite good. Um, I'm hearing voice that characters, a lot. Yeah, a the, lot the voice of- characterizations are great. A lot of and, people I know are saying, go ahead. "Yeah, dude, that was that, it's surprising that it was how good it was." Hmm. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect, and I really enjoyed it. John Favreau does a nice job as the director, and you have it, it, it for the most part follows the uh, the animated '67 movie fairly well. I mean, it makes some changes. There are certain characters that are not in this. Um, the ending's different, but yeah, I really liked it. The one thing I would say too is. If you have really small children and you want to take them to this, even though it's rated PG, there's some sequences in there that are pretty pretty tough. And so for little kids, I, I'm not sure if they might like it, but um, but I definitely thought it was one of the better movies I've seen so far this year, and I was very surprised how well they did it. So right. I, 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 I would even see this thing being nominated for an Academy Award as Best Picture. Wow. Cool. Very, that's very cool. Yeah. Uh, me, I'm still doing my 366 and 366. Uh, I caught up with a rewatch of something the other night. Uh, Alistella Iglesias' Last Circus. It's a five-star film. I love this movie. Both of, both of these movies I'm going to mention, I dearly love and I, and I highly recommend. Um, the first one, again, is Last Circus. Uh, could go on the shelf next to Santa Sangre in a weird sort of way. I, I would put it on the on the shelf next to the Fall, even though they're not they're very 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 different. But quality wise, they're, yeah, they're great. And then then the other one is Cheyenne Sono's Cold Fish. It's really long, and it, but it's super funny and super perverted and. Uh, just about any movie by either of these guys, either Alex L. Iglesia or Cheyenne Sono. Cheyenne Sono gets a little tough sometimes. It's a little in your face. But they they just do nothing but make terrific movies. Um, and then bringing it all full circle, one of the things I just realized that we forgot to mention in the uh, Gaiju conversation was Godzilla vs. Bambi. Oh. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. It's out there on YouTube. You can find it. If you've never seen it, yeah. just do yourself a favor and, and, yeah. and, and watch it. Absolutely. Um, before we check out of here, I do want to ask you about Monster Palooza. Um, Monster Palooza got moved to a larger venue this year in Pasadena, um, kind of outgrew its home there in Burbank. Um, it it was fantastic. Um, it The actual convention itself, I think, is much better for it. You got more room. You got way more vendors. More stuff going on, um, and it's more contained. Whereas the other one was kind of in a warren of rooms, and this is almost one just big giant room. Um, the only complaints that I heard from anybody is the it's the not involved in the convention itself, but hanging out afterwards. Um, the Sheraton and the Pasadena Convention Center is not really set up to handle a bunch of drunken, tattooed, crazy <laughs> monster uh, people, um, whereas whereas um, 
the Marriott and, and Burbank kind of embraced that. So I think it's just going to take, you know, one or two of them for people to figure out where to, to go. Um, the, but the bar in the Sheridan is not the place. But having said that, a uh, fantastic, amazing show. Endless, endless, endless um, things to inspire you and make you feel like that you'll never be that good um, sure. simultaneously. Um, met many wonderful people. Had a great time. Um the the after party show was really notable because they were giving a lifetime achievement award to Greg Canham, who's a makeup artist who's done everything, everything. Um, and Gary Oldman, who's done up a few times, That's Dracula, cool. for Dracula. example, sure. um, came out and actually presented the the award to him, unbeknownst to anybody. So it was it was great. It was a, I had a wonderful time. I'm writing up. Uh, I'm going to do a write up on it for Stop Motion Magazine for the June issue. Um, and I have a new um, uh, article coming out in the what's going to be the current issue of Stop Motion Magazine. So right keep on. an eye. Uh, look at you. That. Yeah, look at that. Right ah. um, Brian, did you have anything you wanted to close out with? Yeah, I would just say that uh, if people who are listening to the podcast are interested in, in getting more information on kaiju stuff, um, there's two sites that I could recommend. One's called Toho Kingdom. Dot com, and there's a lot of good stuff on there. And then you can go to something called Wikizilla, which is like Wikipedia, but with a lot of Godzilla stuff. So you can just Google Wikizilla, and it'll take you there. But TohoKingdom.com I thought was a pretty good site. Yeah. Right on. Anything else? No, I think that's right about on. it. All right, so me, uh, Jesus. Moonlight Serenades is coming out, I'm hoping, in the beginning of May. The cover art is by Langley, and it rocks. Uh, no Flesh Out We Spare 2.0 is coming out. 2.0 being a Redux. I'm thinking of calling it a Redux. Cover art by Langley J. West, and it's the bomb. Um, go to Zed Presents for all information on our coloring books and on how to get my books. I'm on Amazon. Please buy some of my shit. Uh, go to TomCarnell.com for my 366 and 366, as well as back issues or back uh, episodes of this show. Um, follow me and the show and Langley on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Heather Buckley is on Facebook and on Twitter. The show is now on Instagram. I, I just put up a picture of Maria Ospenskaya. And, uh, yeah. I did, oh, oh, and Crypticon at the end of May. I'm, yeah, that's I'm, right. We're doing Crypticon. Lionel's got a bunch of panels. Do you know what one or two panels that you're doing? Uh, I don't remember them all right off the top of my head. I know I'm doing sex and horror. Yay. I'm doing room life murderers or something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a panel about podcasting, superstars of horror podcasting. Right on. Um, so that's which I thought was. That's awesome. Very meta. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, me, I'm doing Crypticon. I'm doing Ask the Embalmer for one one hour, and then I'm doing an interview with Ginger Lynn. The, yes. The <laughs> 80s uh, porn star slash horror star. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder how many people listening to the podcast, when Langley said sex and horror, heard sex and whores. Yeah. I, oh, well. <laughs> I think that yeah. says more about them. Yeah, right. I know. The uh the, but the Ginger Lynn thing, I think it's going to be interesting because it's going to be I'm going to have to get everything pre-cleared. She doesn't know that yet, but I'm going to have to get everything pre-cleared because I don't I want to talk about some really in your interesting stuff. Yeah. More than what was Rob Zombie like. Right. So we'll see I we will see how that How did you how did you get that lined up by the way if I may ask? I've done Crypticon a lot for the last since No, with Ginger Lynn. Oh, I just said that they offered me a bunch of people, and I gave them. She's going to be a guest at the con, and uh, they gave me an hour with her. So um, we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get deep. Cool. I, so, <laughs> an hour with Ginger Lynn in which you get deep. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I've been telling people that I'm doing Ginger Lynn at Cryptocon. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess that's it. Next week, uh, I don't know what we're doing. We're, we're planning to have more guests. Because uh, you guys seem to like that. I was going to say we've been we've been brainstorming brainstorming a lot of ideas for the show, and and I think we've come up with some really cool ideas. So agreed. Please listen and 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 keep letting us know what you think. Um, We're starting to get feedback on the 
Facebook page and on right. Twitter. Yeah. So please keep that up because yeah. it really lets us know that you're out there. Yeah. All right. So for the Bonus Material Podcast, Episode 74, Gaiju, I'm Tom Carnell. I'm Brian Ellison. And I'm Langley West. Stay scary. Stay scary.